Hi all. Hang on just a second. I'm just finishing getting here and I'm going to show you how I do. Um, I've just started doing a uh, two color ombre using a tea strainer to help me get the colors blended a little bit more in the middle. So hang on one sec. I'm trying to pull up the um, video on my other tablet here, so um, I don't expect too many people to pop on, but in case anybody doesn't ask a question, hopefully I will be able to see it. Hopefully I will be able to see it. Let me... I turned the volume off on that, so hopefully that's not going to create an issue. So. Um, if it does, I apologize. Well, wow, that's really distracting kind of seeing myself over there and trying to look at the camera too. Okay, so I meant to do this video like down here in the corner playing video games. So if you're any teenage boy screeching and whatnot, he's on the Xbox over there. So, you know, you have to do what you got to do. So I do share my space um, with that. So we are going to jump in here i already mixed up my epoxy and i'm going to get my gloves on and stuff in a minute and i'm also going to turn the camera down so give me a minute and i apologize for my appearance i just got home from work and i left my hair up since i'm going to be doing epoxy and i always wear my grungies because i end up with epoxy all over me so uh give me a second and i'm going to turn the camera down and we will get started Oops, I got it backwards. Sorry about that. Hopefully you were kind of prepared for all the twisting and turning and whatnot. Just trying to get it right here. All right, so thank you for bearing with me on that. I'm going to grab some gloves. And hopefully it's coming up clearer, or at least it will on the replay, than it's showing for me right now. My internet is kind of wonky, so I just kind of never know what's going to happen. So I have two cups here that are base painted. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do both of you them for you or not. Um, kind of depends on how fast this goes. So, um, anyway. So I can usually do um, two to three cups with um, just, this is 10 mils. I could probably actually do four or five cups with this because doing very, very little. I use medicine cups, um, and I just, I don't know if I can't really tilt it enough, I use medicine cups and I just mark them off and I fill it. I, you're supposed to do two cups, so follow your epoxy directions. This is what I do for mixing small amounts, and it works for me. So we're only going to, probably only going to use like half of this. Luna. Sorry, my kitty cat. I don't know why she's whining. She wants to go outside, which I don't know why, because it's like 10 degrees outside. Um, so we're going to start with this one. Um, I have taped off the bottom, and we're just going to epoxy the whole thing. So I don't like to dip my fingers in because I don't like to contaminate this um, in case I have something on my fingers. So I'm a pourer, so I just pour on a little bit. And when you're doing epoxy method, it only takes a very little bit. Like, it kind of hurts your hands. You can use... Da, da, da. Um, you can use a brush like this, um, or the, the makeup silicone sponges, um, or silicone, not sponges, but brushes work well. Um, I have this and I like it. Um, it works okay. And actually I think I am going to use it right now just because I want to keep my fingers a little bit more clean. I sometimes do tend to get lines, but 
um, we will work through that. So let's, so when you just brush it and it takes, you just brush it down. And when you first, if you've never done this, when you first start doing it, it's not gonna seem like you have nearly enough epoxy, but you can really, really, really stretch this out. So I just dig that edge right on there and I just plow it down. Here, let me stand up so I can see my viewer a little bit better, see if you can see, but that really pulls up on the edge there and some is sticking, like you're not pulling all of it off. I don't know if you can see where it's shiny, like it's matte over here and it's shiny here, where it's shiny you have the epoxy. Um, but it really, really stretches out. And it, it can be kind of difficult if you've not done this before to find out the not enough epoxy versus too much, because if you get too much, um, you're gonna get a little bit of pooling. And when you put your glitter on, um, it can look kind of like wet in some spots which um, we'll talk about when we get to that part. So um, basically it, it's a little bit of trial and error. That's why when you first start making cups, you, you really shouldn't try your first few and you're gonna be like, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna sell all kinds of cups and da 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 da. It's like, you know what, make a few, see if you like it. But a lot of this, I mean, watch all the videos you can, you know, join the groups on Facebook, read, listen to advice, but really what it boils down to is seeing what is going to work for you. Everybody's working conditions are different. Like I live in central Minnesota, so my working conditions are going to be different than somebody that lives in Florida or Texas or whatever. Um, so there, yeah, I've got from there to there covered. I have almost half the cup covered in just that little bit. So I'm actually gonna stretch it out just a little bit more just cause I can. And we're gonna smooth this all out in a minute. So I'm gonna pour on a little bit more for this side of the cup. That is probably actually too much, but we are gonna run with it. So this is one of those crafts. To me, I am not an expert by any means, but to me, making tumbler cup is one of those things where it's like, Either you love it or you don't. Either it loves you or it doesn't because some people can't even work with the epoxy. Um, I've been very lucky. I'm surprised that I do okay with it. I know I do not have a respirator on right now. And if you have any kind of issues, um, definitely wear a respirator. I'm not right now because one, I want you to be able to hear me and understand me. And two, as long as I am only doing these very little amounts, I don't have um, but that's just me and you should follow all the rules on the side of your bottle of your brand of epoxy. I am using CC DIY counterculture DIY epoxy. I have tried many. Um, I started out with FEMA wood which was okay but it was because it was all I could find locally. Um, don't really recommend that for tumblers. It does kind of yellow that over time. Um, it was expensive for what I got. I used Envirotex Lite on a recommendation from another cup maker, and I loved it. It is, um, I forget what the terminology is, FDA compliant, which makes sure whatever epoxy you use it is FDA. None of it's going to be approved, but it will be FDA compliant for limited food contact, usually contact for outsides um, of containers only. Um, I really liked the Envirotex light. I thought it worked very well for me. I liked um, for my temperature conditions and all that. I did not like that it does tend to yellow a little faster than some other epoxies. 
Um, otherwise, I had great luck with how it appeared. Um, my temperatures in here tend to be, down in my basement, tend to be a little cooler than some people's. I do have to use heat lamps in the general area where my cups sit and cure to keep it nice. All right. So I'm actually going to let this one set over by my heat lamp for a minute while we epoxy the other one just to let that smooth out. So I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. I need to move another cup out of the way. Um, let's see, what other epoxies have I used? So, um, I also tried faux rizzle, and it was a really full finish. Um, it was not the epoxy for me. It was too thick. It cured too fast for me. Maybe I just didn't have enough um, knowledge and experience to know how to use it properly. Um, and it was the, the UV one, the faux rizzle UV. So, um, Luckily, I had started with a small kit of that. And also, yeah, don't buy, if you're trying new epoxies, don't buy the two-gallon kit because that's going to cost you anywhere from $150 to $200 um, to get the two-gallon kit. You're stuck with it. So just get like a 16-ounce kit or a 32-ounce kit um, just to get started. That's what I do. So um, then I tried the KS resin. Um, I liked it. I had a little bit of a hard time with it. I thought for my conditions, it took a little too long to really get rock hard. Um, and that I really had this, um, the counterculture. And I noticed as soon as I mixed up my first batch of it, that the finish, uh, I mean, the resin itself, just mixing it up, once the cloudiness went away, it was, the most crystal clear of any of the resins that I had used previously. So I was like, hmm, I really, I really liked just the way it looked when I mixed it up. Bubbles weren't too bad. I do warm mine. I have, um, it's an old cup warmer. Oh, let's see. Well, if I can see it, it's right here. And then I just put my resin in a, um, it's in a bottle in a jar with water. Um, that's my part A. That's the one that's usually the thicker. And then my part B is just a, um, a cup that I don't really like and I have stripped. Um, I just put hot water out of the tap in there and I just set my part B in there. That's usually fine because part B is not usually that thick. And that's how I keep mine warm. I have heard that they do make a little, it's kind of like a bottle warmer kind of thing. Um, that's advertised for resin now and that's on my wish list just because it would be a little bit more convenient but now that I have officially registered as a, a business yes I am officially now S&P Gifts LLC um, now I just get to figure out how to merge my my back to basics mom channel and my S&P Gifts channel which is my S&P Gifts is basically my cup and my gift business I got to figure out how to merge the two, but um, so I'm kind of trying to be a little bit more careful about watching my bottom line. Sorry, I'm kind of rambling, so I'm not paying as much attention to this as I should be to get this done. So you guys don't have to watch me epoxy all day long. This is a 30 ounce cup. This one you can see when I, I base painted it, I tried to ombre it as good as I could. This one, hopefully, will be a, um, a nightmare before Christmas kind of theme. Um, my husband and my daughter love that movie and those characters, so might be for them. I, also, I have a couple other family members who are huge fans too, so maybe it's just whoever fights over it the most, we'll see. But I thought, I'm going to ombre both of them, but I thought I would show um, one with paint and one not. And actually, to be honest, I hadn't really planned out this video. I'm actually leaving in two days for uh, girls weekend. 
and was like, oh, I should do, I've had people, I've been talking on my groups about, um, and seen a lot of talk about doing the ombre with the, the tea strainer. And people were asking me and asking me and I looked at my shelf and I'm like, well, I have these two cups that are painted. The other cup um, I do will be for a craft show. I have coming up in February and I need to replenish my stock for that because I thankfully over the holidays sold gosh all but about I don't know 12 or 15 of my cups so I don't really have much for stock on hand for events and I have a total of three coming up over the next couple of months so but luckily, also, good problem to have. I have been busy with orders. And I have also been trying to be better about, I got really bad over the holidays. I wasn't cooking dinner and stuff very often, like a good dinner for my family. So I've been trying to cook them real food again so they're not eating, you know, junk out of the freezer. You know, so they're not eating chicken tenders and frozen pizza every single night. Not that that would bother my son. Now I'm just going back over and kind of making sure I got all the spots. I've been gabbing, so I haven't been paying quite as close attention as I normally would hopefully you guys aren't getting too bored if you're getting bored watching me put on epoxy feel free to skip well once this is posted as no longer live um feel free to skip ahead to the actual glitter portion of this And honestly, even if I make mistakes and I end up with bare spots, that can always be fixed and you will get the general idea of this video anyway. So I'll just pour it. It's getting a little cold. Do, do, do. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Let's finish the bottom here. Sorry, it's hard to concentrate on the details and talk at the same time. I, sorry, I just bumped the camera with my head. I tend to do that. Okay. So that will smooth out while we go get the other one. So this one, the bottom is not taped off. So this one is going to be a full coverage cup. Let's check my bottom rim. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to set that down. I'm going to swap this out with the other one and I'll be right back. Okay, I just totally stuck my hand on this one without really, I wasn't really thinking about it. And I got some fuzzies on it. So I'm gonna pick the fuzzies off real quick. Cause this is gonna be white. This is gonna, this is gonna be eventually gonna be a, a unicorn cup. So the top's gonna be white. So I don't want those fuzzies on there if I can help it. Oh, come on. So we'll just make sure we put a little bit. Ugh. All right, you know, best laid plans, that whole thing. So we're just gonna smooth this back out. I am putting, using barely any pressure 
because I do not want lines. So I'm just going to grab a little, just a drip of epoxy right in that spot I was just picking at. And I'm just barely dragging this over it actually. Because if you have lines, they can show when you put the glitter on. So, yeah. Da -da. A lot of times I end up just using my finger anyway. Okay, I'm going to go use my heat gun. It's just right over here, and I'll be right back. I just mean to use the heat gun to smooth this out just a little bit. There's a few lines. So I do prefer to do my videos and then be able to edit and um, make it a little smoother and all that for you, but my internet is not the best and my upload, it takes me like three hours to upload a 20 minute video. So um, I've kind of given up on that, um, at least for now. I'm hoping I can upgrade that pretty soon because I hate making you guys sit through all this but again once this is posted um, as a replay hopefully that will be better so okay so now we're going to glitter and I'm going to use I really like this white um, I from um, it used to be called Sparkle and Sprinkle, now it's called Glitters Galore. Um, the lady that ran it retired and now her son's running it. But this is called Starfire and I absolutely love this glitter. I'll show you what it looks like under epoxy. So um, this is what it looks like under epoxy. This is sanded so it's a cup that's shiny but it's sanded but the bottom you can pretty much see. I just think it is gorgeous it's like a rainbow iridescent it's just got so many colors it's so pretty if you hear me yelp at all it's because I have a cat that likes to jump from the floor up onto your shoulder and she's sitting on my chair behind me right now so I hopefully that won't happen so I'm gonna use that Starfire um, from Glitter Schooler and then I'm gonna use um, this um, it's a color shift called always from a little muggle magic I their glitters they're really nice I'm actually in a subscription um, box one of their monthly subscriptions and I'm really liking it. so I have and it's just lined with tissue paper because tissue paper is like less static than a lot of other things and then I just have these are co it's copier paper with like you know stuff that didn't print right or whatever and then to make my glitter move a little bit better, I am all about saving as much glitter as possible. So I'm a, also a card maker and I do um, heat embossing and stuff. So this is an embossing bag, which basically just means that it's got like a combination of cornstarch and baby powder in here and I rub it on here and it helps the glitter not be so staticky so I can retrieve it better. Also, this is my tea strainer, and the glitter can kind of stick in here too. So I just, especially when I'm cleaning it out, I just kind of bash a little bit of this on there, and then it helps not stick to that quite so much easier um, either. So um, hopefully I'm pretty centered here. All right, now this part is not 
smooth and pretty so I hope I do an okay job and you can follow me because it's it's one of those things it's just kind of not I'm not real smooth at it yet um, but I'm just gonna take I prefer shakers but I don't have shakers for all of my glitter yet so we're just gonna do some blue on the bottom now it would look different if we had paint that was blue on the bottom but we're just gonna go with this because I think it's still gonna be really pretty and like I said it's gonna be a unicorn cup so just kind of Now I'm going to kind of angle my cup a little and shake a little bit more so I can kind of start a little bit of that ombre look. This is how I used to do it before I did the tea strainer and it was like back and forth and back and forth. That color shift is really pretty, that blue and purple. Oh my gosh. I'm going to do it a little thicker down here at the bottom. Make sure I got it. Good and covered. Give it a shake, shake, shake. I'm gonna set it up over here. Like I said, I, I'm a saver. Uh, this, you know, good glitter is expensive. So I try to save every bit I possibly can. And then whatever gets down in here, I collect and I have kind of a, a dump jar. And do the Starfire. This one's a little finer. And I will tell you if you buy this one, I don't know why, but this glitter is the stinkiest glitter I have ever had in my life. Like it has a really bad synthetic, I mean, it goes away, but when I'm first putting it on, it just has a really bad, like synthetic plastic. Like I, I can't even describe it. It's kind of bad. And I hope this comes out good. It would be, I would be horrified if I'm doing this live, which nobody's really watching anyway. And this like totally goes bad. Now what I should have done, as you see how I have my starfire here and some of my always my blue came off. I should have like done it like this and then shook because now those two are going to mix. So that's okay. I am going to try. Nah. Let's see. Like I said, I'm a saver. So, oop, sorry. Did not mean to bump the camera again. This is an anti-static, um, especially for glitter. I'm gonna try to save some where I know I don't have that blue mixed in. I know it seems a little putsy, but I'm in. I'm doing cups to not only because it's fun and because I love it and because it feeds my creativity, but I am trying to make money and make a little bit of a profit. So it is all about the bottom line. I could glitter a whole cup with that. Like if I was doing one color, that would do a whole cup. Okay, so now we're gonna mix the two colors together. And I may have to add some more of this Starfire to this, but that's okay. Yeah, these two are gonna mix together nice. So now I have my tea strainer and you squish it together. There's a couple of different versions of this. This is just a cheap one. I got actually four of them together in one thing and I got it. I'm sorry, I dumped the, I bumped the camera again. I just got them on Amazon. I think they sell them at Walmart as well. 
just get careful because you know, glitter will shake out of it. Now I'm going to start more to the blue side because it is still kind of heavy in the blue. I may have to add some more white to it. So I'm going to start more to this way and I'm just kind of shaking, shaking. And I'm also going to turn my cup so it kind of starts that ombre up. You're just trying to blend so you don't get a harsh, super harsh line. I think that's pretty good. So now I'm gonna add a little bit more white to this because I want a little bit of a lighter blend. Now you are gonna have to experiment with how this works best for you. And each time I do it, it's a little different. It depends on the colors you're using. Um, the more dissimilar the colors are, the you know more challenging it is. Doing reds and whites is really fun. <laughs> it can take a little bit. Okay. All right. That's pretty. I'm just kind of. I'm going to fill my tea strainer back up and go over it one more time. Oh, I had an unhappy kitty. I don't know what her problem is. So when we do that other cup, that's going to be really different. I haven't done this. This is only like the fourth time I've done this, actually. Um, but that other one with the black in it, it's going to be... A little bit interesting. Oh, this is so pretty. In the light, it's kind of hard to tell. I mean, it still looks a little dark down here. And the cool thing is, is when this sets, which um, I could probably later tonight see on this whole thing because doing it this way, I just hang it. But um, if I decide it looks like it needs more glitter, I can do this whole thing. I mean, yeah, decide I need more glitter. I can do this whole thing, whole process again. But we'll see when it dries, um, see what it looks like. But I honestly think it looks pretty good. This line is a little dark, so I might Let's see. This is where it comes like it is not. This is not an exact science. Like I can't say do this, this and this and it's going to be perfect cuz you know, you're going to have to trial and error it a little bit. That looks a little better. I think it's pretty. All right, so we're gonna call that one good. And I'm gonna clean this up and go set this on my rack and I'll be right back. Now this pile of glitter, you're gonna think, well, what are you gonna do with that? Cause now, you know, you got your colors mixed together. So I do one of two things. I either have little containers, which I can't reach them right now cause they're blocked up by my stuff. Um, or I just take my paper and I just fold it up together and make a little envelope out of it and set it in my drawer where I have my mixes. So, I mean, you just kind of, I mean, I could put it in my dump jar, but I think this color combination is super pretty. So I'm just going to fold it up.
and save it. I'm just gonna put a clip on it. And then I'll take care of it after we're done. But it's out of the way and I don't have to worry about it. So, so next we're gonna do black and purple. So I'm just trying to think these colors are completely different. I'm trying to clean them up. Sorry about all the paper shaking noise. Um, we will clean them up as best I can. Oh, dang, I love this stupid camera. Okay, so this is where you gotta clean this out real good. And that's where that putting that little bit of um, the anti-static, like I just, it helps bash the glitter out. If there's any stuck in there, be a static. It'll come out. Sorry about the noise. Somebody's beeping me on my phone. Okay. All right. All right, so for my purple, I'm gonna use, this is a, from the same, oh gosh, company as the Starfire. This is part of the um, Glitters Galore. This one's called Purple Fig. And then I just gotta grab my black, which is just um, from Recollections. It's not a very sparkly black, so just so you're aware, um, when it gets under epoxy, it's not very sparkly. But I usually mix it with a little bit of something. Let's see if I have a mix here. I should have grabbed this out before and I didn't. Got that one. Let's see. Oh, I'm just falling apart. Again, I am not a professional. You know, I'm just trying to have a good time. So this is mixed with a little bit of a silver, so I'm gonna put in some more black, just because I do want that little bit of sparkle, but. I only want a little bit of sparkle. I don't want a, a ton. I want it to be more black than silver, which you can see all the, the silver is finer, so it's sticking to the container. Um, but there's a couple of things you can do. It's hard to find a really good sparkly black that's black black and not like purpley black. Yeah, that'll be good enough. So. All right, let's give it a shot. So we are gonna do this again. So I like to try and get my bottom covered first. And I'm gonna go real slow. Oh, a lot of people glitter on their turners. I do not. Um, I find I have a much more control over where my glitter goes. Um, how much I'm using, how much I waste. Um, this is this is what I found works for me. So which that's you know that's what crafts and making stuff and you know doing it your way. That's what it's all about. It's not about doing it exactly the way somebody else does. It's about you know maybe taking a tip and making it your own, taking an idea. I mean, I certainly wasn't the first one to come up with doing this to these cups, but I took the idea and I ran with it. And I find it so interesting that everybody has their own style. Like, even when you try to copy somebody else's cups um, or do something similar, it's always a little different. Like, everybody's has just a little different spin on them, um, which is cool. And there's some styles that just don't speak to me, so I haven't really like I haven't really done. Um, oh, what is it? The crackle technique. I kind of want to because I think it looks cool. I just haven't had time, and I haven't had anybody request one of those, so I haven't had to mess with it. I do love doing my wood grains. I like doing my my rainbow cups. Um, I especially love doing the gray 
wood grains. I just think they are really impactful and cool. I have found it depends on the brand of inks. I mean, not all alcohol inks are created the same. Um, there's some really good ones. I mean, all of them are good, but I've just found that some of them react different. Like my Tim Holtz alcohol inks and my Pinata alcohol inks just react differently. I don't like one less or more. I just, they're different. All right, so now we're gonna do the purple. Them on their side, but I like them for their space saving. So I'm gonna push this over here because I'm glittering here. And if any black falls off, I want the black to fall over here. So, cause I'm gonna try to not mix them yet. So this is one of their like super duper ultra fine glitters, which you will find may not have quite as much sparkle, but they're very velvety. Um, so these, especially if your epoxy is not pretty even, it will show kind of the slick spots. That's why um, when you're using these super fine glitters, you may have to go over it a couple of times because they really soak up in the epoxy. Like, I don't know if you can kind of see right there, like there's a kind of a wet spot. Now I'm not leaving quite so much room for ombre in this one and hopefully this is still gonna work out for us. Cause this one, I'm totally winging it like completely winging it on this one. Cause I have a feeling this one is gonna be much different than other stuff I've done so far. So I'm trying to tell if I got any black mixed in. think so. Sorry if I'm not talking a whole lot. I'm trying to think as I go here. Got glitter all over my hand that time. Oh yeah, it's good. It's good, it's good. I'm not gonna pour quite all of it back in because I'm gonna mix. Black in. I'm trying to do equal parts, but we will see how it goes. Needed a little more black than purple. Like I said, I have not done this color combination before. So. And you know what? We can always go back over it and blend it better. So it's really not that difficult. This purple is so fine. It just goes right through the sifter. See, like you can see right there. I don't know if you can see right in the middle, right there, it kind of looks wet. I'll have to go back over that with just purple um, to get that to fill in a little bit better because it will show if you put epoxy over the top of it. Ooh, that's good. Ooh, I gotta fill up again. I didn't mix up quite enough. I gotta fill up again. I'm sure there's somebody out there that's found a smoother way or a better way to do this. And again, feel free to, oh gosh, that's pretty. 
Oh, I really like it. Okay, I'm gonna move this off. And I think I'm gonna do just purple to kind of fill in and blend. That looks pretty awesome. I think I'm going to, I think I'm just going to use this. Yeah. I am very indecisive. You know, I don't think I'm going to put that back in my jar because I can't tell if any mixed in with that. So I'm going to do this. And if this cup goes good, I will make some more of these and I can just use it. So I'm gonna mix some more black in there. And you know what, when it boils down to it, it's just glitter. You can do what you can, save, 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 economize, economize. But when it boils down to, it's just glitter. One spot, just, uh, I must have got it a little thick right there. My epoxy must have been, I don't know why, a little bit thick right there. All right, let's see. This is where I kind of get picky. And my lighting is kind of not making it show really like it looks different on camera it doesn't look as blended on camera as it looks to the naked eye Okay, I don't think any more is going to stick, which is good. Let's see if I get any slick marks on the bottom. I think that looks pretty good. So. I mean, there's a few spots, but there's going to be designs and stuff on here, too. It has a little few streaks. But overall, my goal with an ombre is for there to be a blend, not a line. To me, if you have a line, like a harsh line, that is a stripe, not an ombre, not a blend. So I'm pretty happy with that, and I think I'm just going to let it roll. Unless, 
I just decided to throw a little bit more of this on here. You know, we're all way more critical of our own work than other people are, so. Okay. All right. I am going to call that done. So I hope this was helpful. Again, I am not an expert. This is just kind of a new technique I am playing with and feel free to play with it yourself, make it your own, but um, that's how I do it. That's what I found works for me. You can, you know, your mileage may vary as they say. So, sometimes I just give it a little push down. All right, so there we have this cup now. I think that was a success. So I want to thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for joining me today and spending some time here. I hope you are able to go find something crafty to do. And I'll talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Now if I could find my button to stop the video, that'd be cool. Catch you later, guys.